Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I'm looking at a scenario that was the most upvoted one in the previous video. It's a scenario by Vermas4. The scenario reads as following. The super German, sorry, the German super battleship Hindenburg was recently through a miracle broken out into the Atlantic to hunt merchant vessels. In response, the British have significantly increased the convoy protection, but they only have their older battleships to do this. U-799 has spotted a convoy, but through bad luck it has already used up its torpedoes, so it's radioed the Hindenburg to engage the heavily defended convoy called XQ-76. The convoy consists of 20 transport ships, with 4 battleships, 4 heavy cruisers, 2 light cruisers and 6 destroyers from 1930 as an escort group. The super battleship Hindenburg has 2 heavy cruisers accompanying it, which have been called in as additional help. My ships are from 1940. Your task is to play the German raiding squadron and sink all the transports and the enemy battleships as they pose a significant threat for future commerce raiding. So, I get to design a German super battleship. Fun. This is going to be very, very nice to do. Um, big hull. Decent amount of secondaries, couple of main guns, and uh, we should be chewing through those battleships pretty damn easily. So let's design the ship and get to work on sinking some German, or sorry, raid, uh, merchantmen. Now, um, super battleship. Displacement up to 105,000 tons or 130,000 tons. Let's go with 130,000. Uh, let's set the speed to 30 knots. It is supposed to be a commerce raider. And commerce ships, I think, usually don't do more than 15 knots. Um, this means that 30 knots should allow it to intercept pretty much anything. Now, displacement. Let's just keep this at around 115,000. And this is one that always gets the comment section riled up. Range. If I decrease it to none, people are going to go, Oh no, you cannot just slide it to very short, because that wouldn't be realistic. What they seem to be missing at that this is a game. If I slide it to very high, the historically accurate crowd is pleased, but then the other people go, Oh no, you should have been reducing it to very low, or very short, because now you can have more displacement. So, I'm fucked either way, I might as well keep it at medium, and appease absolutely nobody. Bulkheads, maximum. I want to keep the ship alive. Um, we're going to go for diesel 2, marine diesel 2 engines, oil, and force boilers. Let's go with, um, what shall we do here? Turbo electric drive 1 or 2. It is German ship, so let's say that they over-engineered it. Uh, advanced propeller shaft 2 or 3. I'm not sure if they would spend too much time working on that one. Armor, group 4, barbette, maximum barbette thickness, anti-torpedo. Um, I'd say that this super battleship would always be escorted by other groups. So let's say that torpedoes would be um, intercepted, if you will. They would be detected by other ships. So let's go with anti-torpedo protection 3. Triple hull. Standard reinforced bulkheads 2. Anti-flooding 2. The biggest threat to this ship, I think, would be shells from other battleships. And then the Citadel, all or nothing. Actually, no, I think the Germans used a turtleback armor scheme mostly. At least I know that uh, Bismarck and Tirpitz had one. And this could be the next extension of that project. As for the shells, let's go for heavy shells for this one. I've already done the super heavies quite a few times, so let's go for heavies. Standard ammo shells. Uh, no, I'm gonna go with increased. If you're gonna go with a scenario, and the scenario says that this ship is a commerce raider, I don't think that they would want it to go back to port every couple of days to get additional ammos, or ammo, additional shells. So let's go with increased ammo. Uh, torpedoes, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using those yet. Propellant, I think just straight high TNT. Easiest way to go. Then, electro-hydraulic turrets. Auto loaders and uh, torpedoes might check in later. Rangefinders aimed at long range gunnery. Stereoscopic rangefinder 5. Radar improved radar rangefinder. I mean, it is German engineering. Why not? Radio. Radio direction finding or improved radio telegraph. 
Let's just go with the highest tech. I don't really have a budget anyway. That was not specified in the scenario, so I can go as high or as low as I want. Right, what sort of a ship do I want to build out of this? What sort of armament would I like to use on it? Um... Main guns. I don't want to go 18 or 17. I think that's a bit big. So let's go 16 on this one. And go for the dual barrel. Could I place a barbette here by any chance? No, I'd have to do that over there. But this could slide back, right? Uh, standard superimposed barbette. Oh, that doesn't fit. Has to be a bigger one. More firepower. The thing is, however, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get my second tower on this ship. The way that it's currently designed. Because I really would like this turret to also be firing. So I can sort of fire at an angle like that and have all my turrets firing. And why am I not going for triples? Um, I believe the Germans were mostly using doubles. And I've done triples in a lot of videos already. So why not just go for uh, the doubles this time around? Let's do another double on the stern. Mm -mm. No joy. Doesn't fit. Still, my four weight offset is only 0.4. So I can actually make that work. All right, now we need to, a couple of guns to start raiding other targets. Seven inches mark five, eight inches mark four, and of course the six inches also mark five. Let's have a couple of dual barrel mark eights. Uh, this has an excellent field of fire. And you can also fit those in the larger slots here. I could fit another one here, but the firing arc would be pretty bad. All right, can I put some of these guns elevated? I can indeed. That can be five inch, can it be six? No, six is too big. Six inch doesn't work. Although I could put a couple of six inch on the stern there. All right, so let's go for five inch dual barrels. All right, and with that, I think I have enough firepower on this ship. Torpedo tubes. Um, not really too tempted to go with torpedo tubes. I know that some German battleships carried them. Um, they do have a decent range. That's the 21-inch torpedoes. If you go all the way for 24 and oxygen, you can get up to 22.3. This would be a very powerful weapon to use against a convoy because you can just lob it out at 20 kilometers and if you have a couple of widespreads you can pretty easily wipe out a larger chunk of the convoy or at least slow them down but where would i fit them because underwater i only have two slots for port and starboard torpedo tubes and I have had some mm, very mixed results, to put it gently. Very, very mixed results with torpedo tubes that I have put onto the side of the ship. Especially more towards the front. Uh, not too long ago I put up a video where I think I actually got hit by my own torpedo. So that's not something that I'm looking to repeat. Now as I'm looking around here, I think I might be able to fit another 8 inch over there. Just spin that one around. There. That's quite a lot of firepower on the bow. Oh, hold on. Where do you need to be? Starboard weight offset, port weight offset 1.3, really? Another double eight inch. There. Now, ideally I would rotate it, facing front. There we go. So that's uh, an interesting turret setup over there. And thanks to that barbette, I'll be able to just swing this turret over the other ones. Anyway, back to the torpedoes. 
How about a quad launcher somewhere here? Not sure if I'm going to be able to use it, but at least it could pose a bit of a threat. And unfortunately, I don't think I can fit two. I can fit one here. But here I'm running into the 8-inch turret. So yeah, let's just go with one torpedo set here. And those are going to be oxygen-fueled 24-inch torpedoes. So they will definitely strike a severe blow. Now, the ship is almost done, at least armament-wise, but funnels would also be a very important element here. And funnel capacity is 68.5, or rather engine efficiency. Uh, yeah, I cannot fit any other funnel. So, that's going to be a problem. This means that I'll lose out on torque at high RPM. Acceleration is decent. A little higher than standard. Hmm. We'll see how it goes. We'll just see how it goes. Okay. After weight offset, 1.3%. I'm actually a bit surprised about that. Because I thought I had quite a few of my weapons placed towards the bow. For weight offset, 0.6. 0 0.1. There we are. Alright. Time to armor up. More belt armor, uh, also quite notably more deck armor to make sure that against plunging fire I'll have more protection. More deck extended armor, more belt armor. I can probably go very, very high on this one as I have 115,000 tons and I've only used 103. Uh, 15 inch deck armor actually works. Wow. This thing. Um, at a range of 15,000 meters, which is the starting range for this scenario, is going to plunge through 14.5 inches of armor. But I have an armor quality of 110%, so I'm effectively, I think, 30 inches. So that might even be a bit too much. Let's go for 14 inch. And then another 14 inch belt armor. Uh, can I get to 8? Yes, 8-inch deck extended. More on the conning tower. More on the turret top. And now we're getting closer to displacement levels. The last thing I would want is for those turrets to get knocked out. 10-inch top armor. And throw on some more to the secondaries. Oh, hold on. 7.5. Alright, the last thing I need to do is rename this Hindenburg. All right, let's take the Hindenburg out for a spin, start sinking some British battleships, and then the commerce ships. Let's go. I wonder what sort of cruisers I'm going to be getting. <clears throat> I didn't design those, of course. So that means that you're once again left at the mercy of the AI, which <laughs> sometimes leaves a bit to be desired. All right, here's the Hindenburg. We got the Princess Wilhelm and the Steer. These are armed with 6-inch guns, 4-inch secondaries, 2-inch secondaries, more 2-inch, and, well, just like a, a lot of 2-inch guns, <laughs> in summary. These guns, these 6-inch, could actually come in very, very handy as I'm starting to raid their commerce units. And uh, the Steer is going to be exactly the same build. Alright, the plan here is to quickly sink the British battleships. The British battleships and the British escorts. So this is a destroyer that needs to go down. Which is probably already in torpedo range. Here's another one. I'll put my secondaries on that. So let's alt right click for those of you interested. And that is a light cruiser, I imagine. There's another DD there. Here's the battleship. Alright. So that was the main target. And that is the secondary target. And you're not going to fire any torpedoes until I tell you otherwise. And uh, this, this chasing formation is actually working out quite well for me. Because I can fire all of my guns. At least all of these bow guns. Look at that. Lots of return fire coming in, though. 
Time to put that armor to the test. Now, the heavy cruisers. I want to know what sort of speed you guys can get. At 33. Alright, just keep sailing directly forward. And start picking off the targets. Mostly importantly, the destroyer here. Hindenburg with secondaries is going for the destroyer, which seems to be bouncing off with the shells. Yeah, right now it's not too severe. This whole AI formation is going to turn into an absolute mess, by the way. Because the battleship's going to try to break out, the commerce ships are going to try to retreat, the destroyers are going to try and turn around and actually get into a position from where they can do damage. These guys are, of course, armed with torpedo tubes, being destroyers. But I'm not sure if they're willing to launch those for risk of the chance of hitting a friendly. I do not have such limitations. So if I can get another torpedo off on the battleship, or let's say... Uh, torpedoes, a shift right click. Let's just give the torpedoes that general direction. I might need to open up a bit more in order to land those torpedoes. There we go. Put salvo away. And now slow down to half speed. Sorry, full speed. Get an accuracy boost. And the first destroyer is down. Next up, I need another destroyer killed. You. Any hits on the battleship? Yeah, a little bit. She's been put on fire. And she's still steaming away. The destroyer's coming in in a hurry, though. The Brits are trying to defend that convoy at all cost. And it is going to cost them. Yeah, the shells are just bouncing off of that ship right there. Okay, so maybe I should change fire. Especially with the mains, because they're all bouncing off of the battleship. This destroyer's already taking damage. It's really good news. Ooh, good hit. Destroyers live and die by their maneuverability. And their ability not to run into other ships. Although that ability seems to be impaired. She should be dead in a minute. So that's another DD done. In the meanwhile, the heavy cruisers seem to be taking on this uh, transport here. Which the game still considers a warship. How are the heavies doing? These are doing alright. What's the range? Uh, 9.2. Yeah, I'll just let the heavies pick off the transports, because my objective is to sink four battleships and all the transports. And the way that I'm currently playing the Hindenburg is mostly to eliminate the threats to the Hindenburg itself. So that's one transport down. Uh, the DDs are all inside of a smoke screen. Sink the next transport. Reduce speed to 30 no or 26 knots. Full speed. Hindenburg status. Hindenburg structural terminate 99%. We're working over another transport here. So far, this whole bow setup seems to be working out really well. Look at that. I should keep this in mind for future battles. Having that higher bow turret, so let's say the C turret here, and the B turret on um, another mount, barbette, and that allows to have a couple more turrets in the front. Lots of incoming fire, but the Hindenburg is so heavily armored that she really doesn't care much. We're taking down what the game might consider a light cruiser. Yep. Judging by armaments. No, actually, that's not a light cruiser. That's a d destroyer. That's a destroyer. Another transport getting sunk. In the meanwhile, I have no idea where my torpedoes decided to go. Could be anywhere. Now, it seems that everybody's very much occupied with firing at the Hindenburg. And so far, the heavy cruisers are just getting by. And not taking any fire. There goes the light cruiser, aka the destroyer. That one's done. This one's almost done. 
We've got a heavily wounded transport here. Next target. Another light cruiser. That's your secondary target. And that's going to be the main. Classed. Light cruiser? Heavy cruiser? The British have four heavy cruisers and two lights. There goes another transport. Cruisers, go for this target. That's another destroyer. So far, I haven't encountered any torpedoes, but that could change. I'm currently banking on the fact that the AI is not willing to launch torpedoes into their own fleet. And so far, it seems to be working. Look at that. Two destroyers getting butchered pretty quick. So what does that look like if you're on the destroyer? It's just some shape in the distance spewing out hot lead. And a lot of it. Uh-oh. AI doing its best maneuvering again. Both taking hits. That collision might have slowed them down enough to get a couple more. Hold on. Why are you coming in so close? Oh, you're a light cruiser. An actual light cruiser. Identification, 83%. Hindenburg, structural integrity, 98%. No shits were given that day. Heavy cruiser damage on the Bedford. There we go. She's suddenly down to half health and on fire in lots and lots of sectors. Mon many bulkheads didn't protect her. Because I think the shells just plunged right through the stern and penetrated pretty deep into the ship, judging by how much damage the ship suddenly sustained. So that heavy cruiser could be down. Or at least very much on its way down, as it's now going to be slowing down. Engines are out. Flooding. I'm not going to say it's not a threat anymore, but it's definitely less of a threat. Torpedoes on these ships. 14.7 clicks. And you're not using them. That works for me. Come on, it needs a bit more heavies. Um, there goes the Bedford. That was quick. The Bedford is that thing that the Hindenburg just murdered right over there. Alright, next transport. Or sorry, next uh, target. This is another heavy cruiser, isn't it? The Minotaur. 14,000 ton displacement. Which means uh, <laughs> it's about 10 heavy cruisers to fit into one Hindenburg. And she is broadside. First damaging hit, thinking it was a secondary. So far, very, very light damage though. Most of the heavy damage has come from penetrations exploding inside the ship. A little bit of from overpens. Cruisers, I want you to work over the Calypso. The Lysander should be going down, because it cannot control the flooding. Then the Wessex. I'm hoping that she goes down too. Minotaur is now taking severe damage. That's what you get for sending broadside onto the enemy. Look at that. There's a small hole there that could have been a secondary hit. This was definitely a main hit. 16 inch guns. Another damaging hit, rudder damaged, all engines are out, she's flooding, she's going to be slowing down, making herself a yet easier target. Wilhelm is taking slight chunks out of the Calypso, but the Calypso is... she's angling away. It is a light cruiser. Armament, 6 inch. It does have torpedo tubes, one on the stern. Well, has torpedo tubes, because I think it might have just gotten destroyed. Uh, heavies, can you temporarily switch fire to the uh, very, very wounded Lysander? Because, contrary to my expectations, it survived. For now. Splendid. Splendid has torpedoes, but again isn't using them. Despite that the Splendid would not actually hit anything now. 
The Splendid could just launch torpedoes at the Hindenburg, and I would have uh, a bit of a problem on my hands, because 115,000 tons doesn't turn very easily. Alright, next destroyer then, Splendid. Range 5.4, so that means that the 4-inch guns can fire, but the 2-inch not yet. Or at least, probably not with great accuracy. But they're just relying on uh, volume of fire. Look at that. Lots of burning stuff in the distance. And still, the Hindenburg is taking a ton of fire. The ship's been scorched here and there. But I think I've... Well, with the exception of the torpedo tubes. Port? No, starboard. Starboard's done. Port's fine. I think most of the turrets are actually operational. Although I'm not sure about this one. There goes the Wessex. That one could be damaged. How are their battleships doing? Oh, the New Zealand's all the way over there. The Britannia is not ruling the waves today. And the Montagu is also moving off. So that's one, two, three, four battleships counted for. That's the New Zealand, and that's the Howe. Okay. The Wessex is no longer a threat. The Splendid is trying to back out and smoke up. Seemingly successfully. The Calypso is also smoking up. Alright, let's take out a couple of transports then. Uh, this, oh, Splendid's just been hit. 405 damage. Nothing to the actual engineering section yet. Ammo count. Looking very good. Almost a thousand rounds of the 16 inch. 3,000 rounds of the 8 inch. Five, well, near enough 5,000 rounds in the 5 inch. Weymouth is now being subjected to what I think is fire from the cruisers. There goes the Weymouth. Next is the Monarch. Let's see if I can start doing some damage against their battleships, although they're not too interested in a fight by the looks of it. But they are, for me, an objective. I need to sink those. Target, New Zealand. Secondary target, Levin. Cruisers, I need you guys to slightly course correct and get a little closer here. And this, these ships are just perfect with their 6-inch rapid-firing guns. And they're four inch. They're perfect raiders of commerce. I probably couldn't have asked for better escorts. Look at that poor monarch. It's not, the whole ship's on fire. Like almost every section. Standard bulkheads. There you go. Monarch's dead. Levin's dead. Next, transport Caledonia, Hindenburg tra uh, target transport Eclipse. So far, very little damage on the New Zealand. And, yep, the Hindenburg is still the favorite target of all the battleships there. Caledonia is going down quick again. Look at all that fire. That's what happens if you subject it to heavy fire. Or, what is it? Uh, cordite. Yeah. Cordite will burn everything. Caledonia, done. I kind of feel bad for just murdering all of these guys. They're just out here doing their job. They're just out here trying to transport the materials that either Britain or... Uh, yeah, let's say that, that Britain urgently needs. Let's say it's an import convoy. And... Uh, just have no chance at all. Hindenburg, 94% structural integrity. The escorts are doing their escort job very, very poorly. It's like they don't even care. Now, I'm just trying to clear up the amount of transports a bit. That should also let the game run a bit smoother. 
There was somebody uh, not too long ago who recommended that I try a battle with 200 chips. Uh, yeah, I'll pass on that. <laughs> I do like my CPU in one piece. Instead of burned down into just one slab of silicon. Um, so, a 200 battle or 200 chip battle is just not happening. That is not something that my PC can handle. But if you do have a, an interesting idea for a scenario, I am all ears. Um, I know that some of them are being uh, repeated in the comments. Uh, just keep doing that. Keep putting them in there. Every time I look at the video and check the comments, the ones that had the highest upvotes, so the most likes on that particular video, that's the one that I feature in the video. So that's my process, that's how it works. Let's see, rat stock is going down, and the oak is going down, and they still have four ships in a line over here. Audacious, Orpheus, Astria, and Winchelsea. Oak is down. Target Winchelsea. The Splendid is still out here, and again, not using torpedoes. That's what I think the British should have relied on. Rushing the ship, rushing the Hindenburg with torpedoes. Sure, she puts out a lot of secondary fire. She can pretty quickly wreck transports and destroyers alike. But against overwhelming force, just a lot of torpedoes, I would have a pretty hard time surviving. And that's what the British aren't doing. They're just allowing me to pick off their ships. So I think that the AI, especially an AI like, well, what they're supposed to be doing is escorting. But again, they don't probably have a task that says escort. They just have a task that says shoot enemy. Now, I'm not a programmer, but that's that's sort of my take on it. That's my, my estimate of what's going on here. So if they had a task that says protect convoy or protect unit... That, I think, would make more sense. Because now they're just... Well, they're not quite running away, but they're not really making an effort to protect all of the other transports. Hindenburg down to 93. Just look at that. Most of the stuff just gets shrugged off by the armor. Sure so enough, you see some, some armor chunks flying off by the looks of it. Of course, the torpedo tubes are usually the first ones to go. Especially the starboard ones were very quick to go. The port ones... I don't know, they don't seem too scorched, but... How many torpedoes we can actually fire from that remains to be seen. There you go. I want to get rid of the heavy cruisers and then just push into the battleships. Because the battleships are armed with 13-inch guns. And 8-inch secondaries, 7-inch secondaries, 5-inch secondaries, and some torpedoes. But where? Bow and stern, that's all. That's all nice and good, but you have to get pretty close to me if you want to be using those. And you're not doing it. I want the heavies to try and take down these two ships. The Splendid, the Calypso, and, oh, and potentially the third one, the Patrol, and the Trusty. Trusty doesn't need much more, but is inside of smoke, so I'm temporarily going to ignore that. Arguably, the Splendid is a bigger threat. Because it still has torpedoes. This one also has torpedoes, but only very, very few launchers. As opposed to the Splendid, which just has two quintuples. So I've got a couple of transports out here. Let's put the secondaries on that. Give the 5 and the 6 something to do. Damage to the Argonaut is severe. Argonaut. She's listing a little bit. Funnel destroyed. Many bulkheads, so it is fairly well protected. 8 inch guns. Which they're firing with pretty decent accuracy. 46%. But it's only 8 inch. At... What am I currently at? 6,500 meters. So let's say round it down to 5,000. You're going to be penetrating 16.6 .6 inches of belt armor. I happen to have a lot of belt armor. So it's really not going to be that much of a threat for me. 
All right, there goes the Astria. Let's go for the Orpheus before I'm getting too far away from her. Splendid. Geez, Splendid's still not down, is it? Keep going. Let's put it to times two. Torpedo in the water. I will not be able to avoid that, but that means that the Calypso is have to. Well, it's going to have to get punished for that. That's an infraction. I'll take that torpedo. That's a given. There's no avoiding that one. Ship's just too big. I did send out the torpedo tubes or the torpedoes. Yeah, torpedo hit port side flooding. Structural integrity down to 93. Ammo detonation on the Splendid. Come on. Splendid's gone. And so is the Calypso. A couple of torpedoes still sent out from the port side. Uh, I don't want any repeat performances on that. So let's go with secondaries on the Trusty. Any more in the water? There goes the Trusty. It's like these guns are just firing. Oh, torpedo in the water. Uh, the guns are just firing everywhere from the Hindenburg. Basilisk is down. Rapid. Just needs one or two more salvos and she's down. Now, I've almost succeeded in one of my objectives, which is to sink most... No, sorry, all of the transports. I still need to sink the Audacious and the Orpheus. And in the meanwhile, let's try and take down the heavier cruisers. Oh, the Argonaut's still here. Yeah, I was firing at the Argonaut, and then I got distracted by that light cruiser. The Glowworm, currently being subjected to the 6-inch guns from the heavy cruisers. Audacious is down. Next is the Orpheus, and then I don't have to worry about any transports behind me anymore. Then it's just going to be time to get the, the, the bigger ships. There's still one transport over there, the Black Prince. The Glowworm is down. Very good. Heavy cruisers, can you sink the Argonaut, please? Oh, that's the Hindenburg's task at the moment. Orpheus destroyed. Jeez, that was, what, 30 seconds? So times two, that's one minute of fire. Uh-oh, incoming torpedo. Hard to starboard. Is that thing going to slip past? No, it's not. Flooding, damage to the main tower. Structural integrity down to 80%. Argonaut. Currently bouncing a couple of shells, which I think were fired from the secondaries of the Hindenburg. Cornwall's coming in. Oh, the Cornwall has torpedoes. Port and starboard launchers. 21 inch. Plus 15% torpedo visibility. And the, the battleship is coming in? Wow. Are they actually looking for a fight now? That'd be quite something, wouldn't it? There we go. That's the Black Prince. That's the last of their transports. Yep. That's the last of their transports. Argonaut, done. That's the heavy cruiser. Next target. How? Or Ho? I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Heavy cruisers. I'm not sure about their effectiveness to the Montagu. I think they can sink the Cornwall between the two of them. Just HE burn it down. Um, oh, it's going broadside. That's not a very clever plan at this range. Hindenburg needs to slow down a bit more. I don't want you to be just point blank range to the battleships. Cornwall being forced to turn around, and with the battleship and the Cornwall behind it, she won't be firing torpedoes. The patrol might. The patrol potentially has already. Yeah, there it is. It has already launched a torpedo. Uh, this one is not going to be a threat, but that one is. Crap. My torpedo launcher is still reloading. Port, 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 port. 
Come on. Takes a while to turn 115,000 tons around. Maybe this one's gonna just sail past the stern harmlessly. Yeah, I think it's fine. The hoe has taken some damage. It sounds so weird saying that. Um, that 84. And once again, the British are building their most powerful ships, the battleships, with few bulkheads. I don't understand that reasoning. I really, really don't. Now, let's see what happens if I get 6-inch guns, just a lot of them, to fire at the Montague. Another torpedo in the water. Come hard to port. And another one on starboard. Uh, that one's going to sail past, probably. Full stop. I'll eat one torpedo, but I can probably avoid this one. Montague, two and a half clicks out. Come on, get rid of the patrol. Main guns, Montague. Montague is very vulnerable. Ricochet chance is very low. And she is pretty much half and half chance to pen. Okay, one torpedo sailed past. Did I get hit by the other one? Yeah, I just got hit by the other one. 67 damage. We're perfectly fine. Secondary is working over the patrol, so that's my 8 inch guns. 865. Montague is not very impressed with the 8 inch guns, it seems. Oh, hold on, there's still a transport alive. What hit this ship? The Britannia got hit by a torpedo that was sent out by the Hindenburg. That must have been on the way for quite a while. Because I don't recall launching any torps anytime recently. Oh well, I don't mind. Let's see about going to half speed again. Montague, current speed. Oh, you're a different class, are you? 26 knots? Out of your 31.5. Okay, you're a fast ship. Montague. No, sorry, Black Prince, flooding, on fire. She's done. Montague just fired another torpedo. Let's see if I can avoid that. Although at this range, I don't expect anything. I just got too close. Holy crap, look at the Britannia. She got hit by one torpedo and she's down to 39%. That hurts. That one torp. Yeah, torpedo from the Montague is unavoidable. Even if I turn hard to starboard, I'll never be able to avoid that. If I speed up to full... Even with maximum engine efficiency, I couldn't get the ship moving fast enough. Although... Hold on. No, she's fine. Just avoided that, Hindenburg. Well done. Now, the Montagu is not really a good target, because it's sailing away, but the Howe is coming in. She's already lost a fair chunk of her floatability. If we can flood that ship again, we might be able to just sink her that way. Britannia is down to 37%, but has control of the flooding. Might start to pump out water and get that buoyancy stored. Do we have anybody else who wants to try and lob torpedoes my way? Yeah, the Howe might be trying it again. The Howe might be trying it again. Britannia's taking some damage from the light crew sorry, from the heavy cruisers, not the light cruisers. It's all just pecking away at her. Zero damage. It's just fires. This battleship might not have the torpedo angle on me at the moment. But neither do I have a good chance to pen 
it, or her, rather. Uh, HE shells. The ricochet chance is way too high. So let's just try to burn her down. Set a lot of fires. <laughs> that was not a lot of fires. Come on. Get the 16 inches. Fire. Fire. The whole bow of the ship's on fire now. Now she's getting quite close. Ricochet angle, 68%. If I can get another withering salvo of HE shells on her stern, the whole ship's going to be on fire and that will sink her. Hindenburg is still at 75%. I think the battleship is still trying to angle to get that bow torpedo tube away. So if I can just keep up my turn, I'll be able to avoid that. Now it's burning a lot less right now. 16-inch guns, almost reloaded. Fire. Fire and flooding on the bow. Look at that. That's going to cost her her buoyancy. I think... She, yeah, she's done. 0 0.7, 0 0.2, done. How's gone? Oh, and uh, as a courtesy greeting, here come the torpedoes. <laughs> That was just adding insult to injury right there. <laughs> Ship sunk. And here, as a farewell gift, is an ammo detonation. Well done. Damn, that was a lot of damage. Um, the heavy cruisers, the Wilhelm and the Steer, are getting quite close to the battleships, but really very ineffectively trying to slowly peck away at the Britannia. Even at these ranges, my chance to penetrate that hole is only 9.5%. 9.6. And the fires, well... They're not exactly starting these fires very quickly. The patrol is really not that much of a threat, especially since it fired all of its torpedoes. I don't consider that a problem at all anymore. Still firing HE, I know that, that's intentional. I'm going to try and uh, overwhelm the damage control parties, especially with few bulkheads. These ships just cannot recover from damage very quickly. There goes the patrol, sinking to heavy flooding. All guns on the Montagu. Although by the time that we are reloaded, there might not be a ship left. Another couple of hits, more fire, more flooding. The Britannia is now taking a lot of fire from the secondaries. Montagu, 13% buoyancy. More fires. This ship is actually pretty damn penable, so let's go for auto and try to get AP on the target. There we go, a bit more damage. Buoyancy, 9%. Heavy cruisers, circle the ships, and take out the Cornwall. They still have three, uh, three battleships, including the New Zealand, which is the healthiest of the bunch. Montagu, 2%, buoyancy, 0.5, 0, done. Ship destroyed. Hindenburg, hard to starboard. I'm going to try and get the port torpedoes off, especially versus the New Zealand. And your mains are firing at Britannia. Secondary is working over the Cornwall. The Cornwall does have torpedoes. But the question is, where did they launch those? Where did they go? I'm not seeing them hit the heavy cruisers. And the Hindenburg has detected torpedoes, but that's been a while ago. She wasn't hit by any of them. I do, however, think that the Cornwall could be a severe threat at short range with those torpedoes. Now I'm going to have to continue my turn to starboard or they'll run into that wreck. Come on, don't torp me, please. Yep, here it's coming. Oh, no. Three torpedoes in. 
big mistake getting the Hindenburg this close. I mean, I love the brawl. But this is gonna hurt. Yep. I deserve that. That's my punishment for getting too close. Torpedo tubes on the New Zealand, if you have them. Cornwall is now taking a lot of flooding. Oh, we're gonna have a collision here. A slow one. But a collision nonetheless. This is really, really drawly at this moment. Britannia. Buoyancy, 1%. Can we please get rid of that one? That is still 13 inch guns which are firing at the Hindenburg, and the Hindenburg is down to 33%. Ammo detonation on the Britannia, she's still here. Britannia is done. Secondary is there, mains on the New Zealand. Turn to starboard. Heavy cruisers, I'm going to need you to s assist because the Hindenburg, thanks to those torpedoes and my mismanagement of the ship, is now taking severe damage. And she's flooding. Hindenburg lost all propulsion. I want an AP salvo on the New Zealand. Chance to pen is 50-50. Swing the guns to starboard. Structural integrity down to 31%. Ammo detonation on the Hindenburg. And flooding on the New Zealand. Structural integrity down to 54%. Cornwall's down. Heavies. Assist and block off the escape from the New Zealand. Another da ammo explosion on the Hindenburg. And this time of the round, the New Zealand is not gonna escape. The ship is flooding from the rudder compartment all the way to the, I'd say, two thirds towards the bow. Structural integrity 35%, buoyancy 13%, 12%, 8%. 5%, 3%, 1, done. And the Germans win the game. Okay, that got a little exciting there in the end. Courtesy of uh, mismanaging the ship and getting way too close. But I just love brawling too much. Getting in there with the battleship, watching all those secondaries go off. That was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. And again, if you have a good scenario... Just post it down below. The more upvotes it gets, the more likely it is to get picked for the next episode. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys soon for the next one.